Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have one of my favorite tropes to discuss. This is the groveling trope. I have 10 romance recommendations for you that are chocked full of groveling, whether it be multiple scenes or one giant scene, more of them or more one giant scene of groveling, but all 10 of these books, I love the groveling scene and a groveling scene has to like really work for me to for me to love it so that's saying a lot with all these books if you don't know what groveling means it means like you're begging for forgiveness you go and do the biggest grand gesture ever to apologize or say you were wrong to someone like oh, groveling it's like seeing a man on his knees because he knew he was wrong like Yes. So one of my recent reads that has groveling in it is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. People have really marketed this book based off of the groveling scene in here. This is a brother's best friend romance that is very protective-ish. He feels very protective over the heroine named Ava. So um, they're also neighbors at this point. So yeah, Ava is not very happy to figure out that her brother has tasked his best friend to watch over. Ava while her brother's like out of the country. She's not very happy about it. She's 22. She doesn't think she needs a babysitter or someone to watch over her. So she makes it a goal to kind of get under his skin because he's very stoic and grumpy and gruff. So um, her, her goal is just like poke the bear and see what happens. <laughs> someone in this relationship when they finally get together is holding or keeping a large secret. And when the other person finds out, they feel very betrayed and one of the other people has to grovel their booty off. So I really love that groveling scene. Another groveling romance that I have to mention is Ever After Always by Chloe Lee. This is book number three, a part of the Bergman Brothers series. Freya in here is our Bergman sister and she has been married to Aiden for quite a few years and they're really wanting to start a family, but Freya has doubts now because Aiden isn't really prioritizing their relationship anymore. He spends a lot of time at work and not a lot of time at home. So she basically gives him an ultimatum, like figure your crap out or we're done. And so Aiden is trying to figure out how to deal with his anxiety. He's a lot of anxiety and he's not really telling Freya. He's not communicating with her. Um, he's wanting to be at work and make the most money possible to provide an amazing future for their family because he, did not get that growing up and so he wants to provide that for his kids um his future kids aiden ends up having to come to jesus essentially about like oh he really messed up and he goes to a lot of great lengths to have or convince freya to bring him back into her heart and um yeah i love aiden look at how cute he looks on the cover i love this romance it's like a really good like marriage in trouble one um and it really just talks about anxiety and mental health which Chloe does an amazing job at that so Astrid Parker doesn't fail is another one for this list and this one is about Astrid and Jordan you read about in book one Astrid was previously engaged to this not great guy like he was not good um and so she's tr really trying to like reinvigorate her life find her life's purpose again and she really wants to get into designing houses like she's a really good designer but she, throughout this book you figure out like the way she's always designed is not who she is as a person. So she's like figuring out who she is as an actual person without her mother like leering over her shoulder because that's what she's had her whole life. Anyway, so she ends up meeting Jordan who owns, who's the granddaughter to the owner of this Everwood Inn that Astrid has been asked to like remodel the interior decorating for. And they're gonna remodel the outside as well. Jordan's on that team, like the construction team to do that. And this is very like, animosity between the two of them at first um but then they end up falling for each other but it has to be a secret because like like it's kind of forbidden like they work together they're filming the process of the rebuild and like they show on camera like they, they hate each other but in reality they're doing some stuff behind the scenes <laughs> so yeah someone in this relationship kind of betrays a person in a sense emotionally and the other one has to grovel. That groveling scene was so sweet. Like I loved that one. Breaking the Bully by Jessica Kane is a novella that falls into this category. As you get with any Jessica Kane book, this is a little bit unhinged. So this one's about um, Allie and Moore. So they were in high school together. They are in high school together. And Moore has always had this huge crush on Allie. And Allie's always had a huge crush on Moore as well. Um, and they've kind of like been crushing on each other, but 
Then one day out of the blue, Ali stops talking to him, just like has no emotion around him anymore, ignores him, pretends he doesn't exist, and more is so upset he doesn't see the girl he like fell in love with anymore and so to get any emotion out of her whatsoever like he decides to bully her he thinks that poking at her will wake a bear of sorts and um will bring his alley back to him in reality Ali's father figured out that um more when her were like getting together or almost about to get together and he is mad he's a very controlling father very abusive and is like if you don't cut things off with him I'll basically kill him. And Allie's like, okay, um, I'll just ignore him, pretend he doesn't exist, all this stuff. That's the only way I can save him. Then Moore learns the reason why Allie did what she did and he is mortified and there starts the ultimate grovel from Moore. If you want a really good bully, like novella, you need to pick this one up. I don't like bully romances and I really love this book. Okay, I know this is a Christmas book but it has one of my favorite groveling scenes ever and it's Stocking Steppers by Erin McClellan. If this is a grumpy sunshine romance where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine, he loves Christmas, she doesn't. She ends up getting stuck at the inn that his sister owns and they have like a grand old time together for a few days while they're stuck in the snowstorm in the inn. And he really wants to pursue things after the snowstorm is done. And she's just like, Broody has a lot of past trauma, not trauma, yeah, trauma. This, this past relationship traumatized her. Um, and so she's just like, I don't do relationships. I don't do that. And then she's realizing like, oh, every person is different just because this man hurt me doesn't mean a new man will hurt me as well. Like that doesn't mean that. So um, she's trying to figure that out. So in this one, you have the heroine who grovels, which is quite unique compared to some of the other books that we get. For a monster romance, I have Deceiving the Gargoyles by Lillian Lark. Her heroine here is a witch and she goes to a matchmaker to match her up with her soulmate essentially. She ends up getting matched with this guy. She's very into him but what she doesn't know is that here he has two mates at home and he wants her to join them <laughs> and for them to be like all four together and the three of the guys are gargoyles. So this is fun fun read. I'm not going to talk about the groveling scene because I don't want to spoil anything, but there is a really good groveling scene in here with one of the characters. So I'm just going to drop that there for y'all. For Alien Romance, I have Claimed by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. This is book number two in the Horde Kings of Drakkar series. The grovel in here, I feel like is the whole stinking book. <laughs> so this book takes place on the planet Drakkar um, with these like Dothraki-esque aliens living there. Um, they're native to the planet and humans have inhabited the planet in certain camps. But they have to follow the Drakkar rules. One of them is you cannot hunt animals on this planet. Like humans are not allowed to do that. Um, but the heroine is literally skin and bones starving. And so she kills an animal. She has to eat something. And um, the hero who's a horde king end up, ends up figuring out that she's doing this and ends up telling her she has to pay for her crimes. And the price for that for a human is to either die or have lashings, you know, like get whipped. And so he has to whip her. And afterward he's like, he's sick to his stomach that he has to do that. But that's the only way to save this woman because all of his other men saw her kill this animal and they're like, we have to kill her, we have to kill her. But he's very, very interested in this woman, very intrigued by her, has this pull towards her. And he realizes the only way he can save her is to whip her. That's the only way. And he brings her back to his horde and um, he spends the whole entire book groveling for doing that to her. Like, oh, this book has a lot going on, but ugh, the heroes grovel. Yes. For historical, I have Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare. This is the fourth book in the Spindle Cove series. This one is about Griffin and Pauline. Griffin is actually a duke and his mother has been pestering him to find a wife. So she ends up tricking him and taking him on a journey to Spindle Cove, which is filled with a lot of eligible young ladies. And she ends up walking into like a shop one day and with him and is like, okay, any woman in here, pick one and I'll make her into your future duchess. Like we're gonna take her back with us to, to London and I'm gonna make her into a duchess. And so he's like, okay, I gotta just pick like the least likely girl to actually be a good duchess. Let's pick that one who's like the barmaid in there. That's Pauline. And um, he like pulls her aside and is like, okay, um, my mom's gonna ask you to like come with us and learn how to be a duchess. Now I will pay you a lot of money to be like the worst possible duchess ever. 
So like, she doesn't want us to get married. I'll pay you because I don't want to get married. And she's like, okay, I really want to open a bookstore in this town. So like, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> but then when she comes to London with them and she goes through all these Duchess lessons and gets to know Griffin more, she realizes she actually does want this life even though she shouldn't. Like she claims that she shouldn't. And Griffin ends up reluctantly realizing like he's falling in love with Pauline as well. Like it is so good. The grovel scene in here, iconic. It's with Griffin, obviously, so I love this one. This is one of my favorite Tessa Dares, for sure. And I have How to Entice an Enchantress by Karen Hawkins. I feel like this book as well, the whole book is about the hero in here groveling. <laughs> this one's about Dahlia and Lord Kirk. They are neighbors. He owns the estate next to her family estate. I do wanna mention also a few years ago, um, before this point, before he and Dahlia became yeah. friends, um, he was actually married, but him and his wife were on a boat. There were like explosives on the boat that got set off and his wife ended up passing and he was left with chronic pain. He now walks with a cane and he has scars all over his body. So he is very much a recluse. And so he finds a little bit of solace in talking to his neighbor, like his neighbor's daughter, Dahlia, about books and reading and the love of books and everything. He's like, okay, I think this woman would be like a pretty good wife. You know, like I need some companionship. I just want a friend. Let me ask her to marry me and the point in this book where it's like very at the beginning like that's just the spark of the book the scene where he asks her to marry him is very much Darcy Elizabeth for Pride and Prejudice rain scene where he proposes to her but he doesn't realize by proposing to her and saying these things during the proposal he's also offending her with some of the things that he's saying <laughs> like very much that scene but there's no like beautiful rain and tension between you like no she's yes okay and so she's just like i'm not gonna be your friend after what you said to me like we're done no and so kirk goes to dahlia's godmother who's a duchess and is like okay i need you to help give me a makeover or something i need you to help me win this woman back and so dahlia goes to a house party that her her uh godmother has put on and lord kirk happens to be there and he's gonna spend the whole house party one in this woman bag and he figures out like through this like i'm actually in love with her it's not that i just want a friend like i'm in love with dahlia as a person and lastly for another historical i have accidentally compromising the duke by stacy reed i talked about this book a few times recently so i'll keep it short and sweet but this one is about a heroine whose family really wants her to marry this gross old dude she doesn't want to so she's gonna put on a scheme to have her be ruined by one of her guy friends she's kind of interested in but she ends up walking into the wrong bedroom at night and she ends up walking into the Duke's bedroom who has been like, there's a rumor going around that he ended up killing his late wife and she's kind of terrified of him. But then when they are seen together um, and she's ruined, he's like, okay, I'll marry her. This is a perfect opportunity. My daughters need a mother. I've been looking for a mother. So this will just be their mom now. Um, so this is about their romance. He's very close off because of what happened to his wife. He did not kill his wife, by the way, um, but something did happen. And the groveling in here was great. I just want to mention that I don't want to talk about the scene in which he has to grovel because like, that would be a spoiler. So, but overall, a great historical romance where you cannot go wrong with a Stacey Reed. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romance books with the groveling trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and be sure to please leave your recommendations in the comment section down below. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the, the like praying hands emoji <laughs> in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.